OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Good morning, everyone. We are the DLAC team from Campbell Adult and Community Education. We are part of the Campbell High School District. And these are my team members. Where are you? Next slide, Jill. Oh, it's stuck again like yesterday. <laughs> OK, there it goes. <laughs> Jill Morrissey, who's an ESL teacher, Lars Kantwet, ESL um, High Set and Flex. In fact, Jill also teaches Flex. And Archana, that's me, and I teach a high set class. Our school serves West San Jose, Campbell, and the surrounding areas. And we offer classes in multiple locations in areas of community education, career education, ABE, ASE, and five levels of ESL. Over to you, Lars. Will the next slide please yeah the we started off um whoop, back again please jill it's nope, it's back it's again. doing what it did for the other day it's jumping on its own we have to start okay. over okay no it's like on its own thing here for some reason oh no Lars, you no. might have um, to take yeah, it. we started off with our um, we started off with our mission. Of course, I can't read my mission right now, but um, I can tell you that our population in um, in our school runs basically. Let's see if I think about our population, we're about 50 percent Hispanic and 20 to 25 percent um, Asian descent. So we have quite a varied um, um, uh group of students that we're dealing with. Um, interestingly, in that population, we have about 65% of our students are ESL students, and about 20% of our students are, are high school diploma uh, students. Ah, here we go. Um, Pre-pandemic, we were looking at a population of around 1,800 students um, enrolled in all of our various programs that um, Archana listed. Um, now, during the pandemic, we've noticed, and we checked with, uh, with the administration, we're looking at about 45% drop in population and enrollment. That's, that's substantial. For us, that's very, very substantial. And of course, um, um, that really hurts in, in moving forward. Uh, what are we going to do next year to recuperate that, that population? What we're looking for next year, you see our school year outlook 2021. 2022, we are more than likely going to move towards a hybrid model where we will have two days in class and of instruction and two days via Zoom instruction. So it's it's going to be a big shift for all of our teachers. Uh, this is going to be something school wide that will be um, um, implemented this on this onset of blended learning, but it's not just going to be one or two classes. It's probably going to be throughout the entire uh, program. Um, we are also envisioning a virtual classroom environment thing. Uh, we found that it was a very um, uh, positively received um, 100 percent online uh, uh, classes. So that's one of the other options that we're looking at is offering um, fully online classes next semester as well, either through our flex distance learning program where students are, are meeting up with their teacher one day a week or through a Zoom environment like we currently are doing. On to the next slide before it jumps. Yes, so we found that online class like everyone else is a safe place to learn and grow um, it was quite an adventure in the spring as we uh, switched quickly into the online platform. It was daunting. It was scary. Um, and then, oh boy, it, learned, it turned out we're not, this is not going to disappear. So we needed to make plans for the fall. And we had a great team in place, um, just really 
uh, or well organized, all hands on deck, uh, created a, an online boot camp program to get the students ready with technology and just any barriers that were uh, there. To, we overcame the barriers so that we could begin the school year on solid ground. But then it became clear that we needed to grow deeper. There's so much information out there. Uh, how do we choose? What programs, what uh, apps are best? Um, we needed to deepen our roots. So as the pandemic set in, it became clear online teaching was here to stay. And we, were, uh, we realized that we needed to just expand and grow deeper. So that was our challenge. And hallelujah, we had a wonderful solution. The DLAC Academy was ready to begin their third cohort. And we wanted to take advantage of that opportunity like you all, and we applied. And we knew this would be a great solution to helping our agency make a plan, grow deeper, and get some professional development. So we had wonderful support starting with DLAC and, and as I mentioned, all the professional development and conferences, networking, um, everything we did uh, as a large group and um, working together with our own team uh, on the online course with Destiny, with the, um, the Moodle course that we did really helped us wrap our minds around everything that um, is involved in creating an online, a functioning online program. And um, OTAN challenged us to put a lot of things into practice. And um, also the other conferences and webinars that we did, we received a lot of help through OTAN. Um, as we were looking at Canvas help and they, boom, right there, our coach Francisca made the connections. And then we had our own, um, you know, Melinda come in and Diana and um, folks helping us out with moving forward with some of the technology that we were scared about. Okay. And then the other thing was our special co coaching with um, Francisca and the other teams that were part of Francisca's um, group. We just learned so much from each other, um, a lot of encouragement, just being vulnerable, sharing our weaknesses, and just the encouragement, as I said, just really was invaluable. Um, so we really benefited from these uh, areas mm -hmm. of DLAC. Thank you, everyone. Like Jill said, We've benefited a lot from OTAN and DLAC. Our coach Francisca has been a great resource. She brings with her years of experience in adult education. She has helped us reach out to other agencies as we were narrowing down our site plan. Our fellow DLACers have also been super helpful, patient, supportive, answering all of our questions. We had a meeting with Susan Roche the day after Thanksgiving and Christina Hyatt over uh, the winter break. Dr. Porter's Gallup Strengths Assessment helped us to understand our team's strengths. My teammate Lars is great with writing and Jill came up with this beautiful slide presentation. We've been focusing uh, on and encouraging our strengths and moving forward as a team in setting goals and piloting our site plan. Our discussions during our weekly meeting with Francisca, Santa Clara team, and Pittsburgh team have been rewarding. We have shared learning practices, resources, and understanding issues, which otherwise we would not even have thought about. And this has helped us look into the future. This past few months, we have all grown as individuals and as a team. Setting a culture for change and learning while maturely handling conflicts and respecting individual ideas. Over to you, Lars. 
Maturely handing conflict. Okay, well. Yes. <laughs> one of the things that we get from the Ideal 101 course is the is the panorama of, of existing programs out there um, and the possibilities. I mean, when we first started our class with Destiny, I kind of felt like these fingers running into these grooves. I felt like I was getting my fingers caught in everything that was running. So I was, uh, uh, I, I didn't really know what was available, what was out there. Um, and the Ideal 101 course gave you that vision of all of what is existing and all of what are the, the the different avenues that are that are that are out there plus all of the considerations some of the considerations such as screening uh for for uh distance learning and um expanded orientation for distance learning was something that i never really thought about initially and the the class opened up all of these these ideas that we had to uh, 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 consider um, the the some of the things with Dr. Dr. Porter, um, I felt like gave me the ability to hand off things because I always wanted to be that person that was involved in in everything that was moving. Um, but a lot of things I didn't really want to do. And Dr. Porter gave me the ability to simply say, hey, I don't want to do this. I'm, uh, it's not my strength. And I could give it off to somebody else and other people could do those things. And that was OK. It wasn't me just sloughing it off. It was actually me playing to strengths. So I thought in my mind. Um, continue to the next slide, please. All right, so ultimately, we were able to come up with our plan, our vision. So just in a nutshell, I won't go down through each one because we are going to focus on them in the next few slides. But um, our main goal was to participate in the Leadership Academy so that we can research and plan and, and develop our tech plan. Uh, we were uh, very comfortable in Google Classroom, but our district offers Canvas. So this is a great opportunity to explore the benefits of Canvas and see if we like Canvas. So we thought this would be a great um, project to do. Um, down the road, we, we hope to be the team that assists and trains our uh, faculty and staff as we transition into Canvas and take on some other projects. So our first project, as I mentioned, is uh, at midterm report here, is we are ready to move into Canvas. Many of you are doing Canvas, but as I mentioned earlier, it was like a daunting thing for us at first. Um, so we really got a lot of support through DLAC. So we're ready now, we're ready to pilot Canvas. Um, we've divided up our pilot into our three strengths. Um, Archana is handling the high set area since she teaches adult ed. Um, Lars teaches intermediate low in ESL. So he has developed a Canvas module for that. And I teach advanced ESL. So that's where we placed our focus. And we are starting next week for our pilot to do our pilots, Archana. So yes, we are piloting Canvas next week in my high set class. We, in my high set class, we primarily use Aztec as the test prep material. And if we have had a great success with it, it was, um, it, you know, we took some time to figure out how to integrate um, Aztec into but finally we decided that you know we I had to link Aztec to Canvas as Aztec in itself is an LMS. So on the next slide, you will see my Canvas homepage, which is pretty simple and easy for students to follow. So I've kept just three or four tabs and links for the Zoom and you know all the resources that we use, um, basically keeping it super simple. The idea is we want students to be familiar with Canvas 
as it will help that it, it will be easy and help them for transition to community college. The focus here is for our students to be successful beyond adult school. And we hope that, you know, familiarizing them with Canvas will keep get them ready for future. I have a synchronous math lesson every day as part of our daily class routine, and I will be adding math worksheets and supplemental material through the course of the school year. And for every, you know, all the other subjects, we'll be primarily doing Aztec as the prep material. This Canvas course can be used either in person, hybrid, or for remote learning. That was the idea when we developed this particular uh, Canvas course. Over to you, Lars. Yeah, what I'm looking at in, in, in my uh, class is, um, if we can move on to the next slide. What I'm Stop looking at in my next slide, in, in, my, next, uh, in my Canvas uh, program, is trying to integrate as much as possible. Um, and there I am hanging from the Campbell uh, water tower. Um, trying to get integrate uh, ventures as much as possible into into canvas so i'm going through page by page with the with the ventures um, um book ventures three book and trying to get it as interactive as possible within canvas so that we can either use it as a a in-class uh resource um using the student's book at the time or use it off uh, uh, Zoom wise, and then I can still interact with students with those same pages using the Canvas um, uh, uh, LMS. So if we take a look at the next page, you'll see that what I've done is I've created a, a teacher made slide member from the um, um, TDLS uh, program I was talking about teacher made. Well, this is a teacher made slide that has an actual screenshot from the uh, textbook with the fill in the blank that students can fill in the fill in while they're in a zoom class and I can actually monitor live as they are filling filling it in. Um, at the bottom of the page, you can't see this here on the screenshot, but on the bottom of the page, there's also a button for the audio so that uh, uh, students can actually check their work with the audio recording of the entire uh, uh, dialogue. So it's that kind of integration that I'm trying to create so that students can either use the material via Zoom or we can use the book in class, physically in class. So it's a seamless use of the, the material. And then for the advanced class, my focus um, is on the future five advanced ESL curriculum. And like Lars, it's a lot of building. Um, there is no shell available at this time that I know of. So it's just creating it um, the best of, to my ability. Um, and I also focused on my homepage for Canvas. I thought I would create buttons and just link uh, just the basics of what I want my students to use. And uh, so I created my banner and the buttons and uh, I'm not live on this, but each button like the Zoom link, the email, I have a book club where I have um, a library of books that the students can select a book. It takes them directly to that um, application discussion, homework, I'm going backwards here. And then today's lesson of vocabulary, that would be my focus for my, my group, but other teachers may want to select their own buttons, their own focus for their Canvas classroom. So that's what we're working on, is just sort of de developing and seeing how it goes. So the second project that we're, I know we're really tight on time. Um, second project that we're looking at is making a Canvas uh, module, uh, something called Case Connect. The idea here is we're taking a very successful orientation boot camp program that we've been doing right now via um, uh, Google Slides via Zoom. You have one minute left. Okay and putting it online uh, into uh, Canvas uh, so that we can be teaching Canvas as well as other uh, tech orientation. Keep going. 
Okay, our third project is the Teacher Resource Center, which we plan to deploy in spring 2022. The Resource Center will be a toolbox, just like in the picture, with everything the teachers and staff need, from information about the school, the contact information, the courses offered. We're also thinking about dual enrollment. So information about dual enrollment and all the support services uh, we offer for our students. Uh, next slide, Jill. And so this is it in a nutshell, up to the midterm, we started with DLAC training. We moved on to IDEAL, uh, growing our roots deep into the course and experiencing TDLS, coach meetings and Canvas pilot May midterm. Thank you.